As a child, I grew up in a very small village in the Dominican Republic. And on Sundays, and on special occasions, birthdays, weddings, funerals, four generations of my family will share a meal together. Everything we ate was grown in my family's land, and after this meal, we will gather around the elderly who will share family history and wisdom. It reminds me of my grandmother who cook not only for all of us, but for all the workers who came to pick up peanuts in my father's land. But there was something very special that she did. And it was that she, before she served everybody else, she will take her meals first, and she will put them away. And one day I asked, Abuela, why do you take your meals first? And she goes, ah, let me tell you. I have to take care of me first. <laughs> if I eat, rest, and sleep well, in the morning when I get up, I have all the energy I need to take care of you and everybody else. That was my abuela. The elderly are central to my heart. They kept our family and community thriving. In New York City, the elderly are invisible. You might not see them, but out of the 8.5 million people living here, there's 1.5 million people who are 60 years or older. Or I can say it's like one in every 5.5 people that you see around you, they are here. And they are growing every day, and as the baby boomers keep on marching into retirement, we see that this number continues to grow and grow and grow and grow. And by 2040, we are expecting that there will be more elderly than children going to school in the city of New York. People are very afraid of growing old. Everyone is anti-aging. I don't see it that way. I'm letting my hair gray. Why would I dye my hair? I want to show that I am excited, I am becoming a senior citizen, and it is okay to be aging. Aging is a blessing, because if you don't grow old, you probably have died young. You become a senior citizen at 60, but you can be here for another 40 years. That's what the baby boomers have done. They are going, we are going, we are going to be living longer than any other generation ever did. But we abandon our people, and we don't think that people are really going to grow into their 80s and 90s and hundreds and that we need to take care of our people. Our people stay home alone. And I wonder, what is it that we have done that we are not thinking about, we are not giving time, we are not dedicating this, the time that we need to think about the process of aging. Our people stay home watching novellas, not paying attention. They don't want to be associated with it all because in their mind they are not old yet. And we need to start thinking about the fact that you're going to be here for all of that time and that our elders are here and they need to pay attention to the, f we need to pay attention that they cannot be abandoned, where they are just there taking, developing Alzheimer's and getting depressed and suicidal. And did you know that 
the suicide rate is the highest among those who are 85 years old, we need to start paying attention. Where I work at Union Settlement in East Harlem, a non-for-profit agency providing services to people of all ages since 1895, I am the person responsible for providing programs to the elderly. And I can tell you that our most successful programs are our meals. People come to eat together. But they come to eat together not because they are hungry, but because there's a need in you to eat with somebody else. I don't know why, but we were created that way. Together with Mount Sinai Hospital, we have been creating this program to help doctors become aware that not every elderly person coming to the hospital is sick, but in desperate need of socialization. And the prescription could be, go to the senior center, do yoga, go swimming, play tennis, eat better, go on trips, get a dog, get out of the house. New York City is a wonderful place to grow old in. When we are organizing these trips for seniors to go to places, it's like seeing a group of high school students that it is enjoying life. And they go with their friends and enjoy just being together. And it is like they are rediscovering who they are as they just socialize with each other. Last year I had the opportunity to go to Radio City with one of the groups. And as we were getting out, one of the ladies came and told me, very secretively, Maria, did you know that I have been living in New York City for over 50 years and I never knew there was such a beautiful thing? It's rediscovering, looking at New York City and enjoying it. We build programs about healthy lifestyle. When I came to work at Union Settlement 14 years ago, East Harlem was a food desert. I couldn't get a banana between 96th Street and 116th Street. <laughs> there were a lot of health issues and diabetes was a very serious problem. We started working with the population, our seniors, who wanted to do something and they decided that they were going to work up uh, improving access to healthy food in East Harlem. And they organized in groups of three and went corner by corner to discover where were the vendors, the restaurants, the supermarkets, the green markets, and they went and worked with the vendors and started making changes. They created a map. And this map is now available to all of the seniors in the community. And even tours are provided to, for people to go and find the food that they really want. It is taking care of yourself that is important. It is being healthy that is important. If you are healthy and social, your sexual relationship do not end because you are 60 years old. <laughs> In fact, they might even get better. <laughs> Taking care of yourself is very serious. Diabetes is still a problem in our community. 10 years ago, 20% of adults living in East Harlem had diabetes. Today, it is closer to 13%. We have a long way to go catch up with the people from the Upper East Side right below 96th Street, where diabetes is only 3%. When people come into my office and they want to tell me something, I already have a feeling that they are coming to tell me goodbye. They are preparing to die. I'm thinking about Alice who 
came with her walker into my office and s never stopped walking, but very slowly said, Maria, look at me. Look at me. For me, crossing the street, just getting to the center, is exercise. And what a lesson. She taught me that I cannot create programs just for people who look like me, but for people at all the different stages of aging. And we created a program with Golden Zumba for the very frail elderly. And now if you come to one of our centers, you will see people with these beautiful ribbons dancing to the music or just moving their bodies. No one deserved to be in bed for their last few years. My grandmother will say, If you think, if you change your thinking process, you can enjoy aging. It is now that you need to start thinking about that. You need to start taking care of you. You go first. You need to eat, exercise, save. You need to start thinking about you. A few dollars really take you where you need to go. But eat, exercise, and embrace your community. And if you do, you will grow like a tree towards the sun uh, until your last very minute. Gracias. <laughs>